Uh, I'm floating in space uh, in Denver. I'm actually really, really excited to introduce uh, this next speaker. It's someone that you will uh, all know and recognize a real uh, OG in the space. So Simon de la Riviere, the man uh, originally behind all the research around bonded curves. And today he's actually here to talk to us about exploring generative art in Ethereum. So Simon, welcome. And uh, we're really excited and take it away. For for this presentation, um, I am going to cover uh, ex uh, generative art in Ethereum. Um, it's got a bit of a rich history, and recently um, it's actually become quite popular. It's like a lot of really interesting projects that's that's come out. So um, let me start. I'm going to give like a bit of a history, sort of somewhat chronological on on um, what's been happening in the space, um, and then also going to sketch. Uh, what I feel is still the future and stuff that we I feel we need to see that's that should happen because there's a lot of interesting possibilities still out there and so um, I want to make it happen so I want to see other people also share ideas around this so I'm going to start off with um, uh, if you're if the technical things uh, get gets a bit too bit in the weeds what you also can do is just look at all the cool art because there's really a lot of cool stuff been happening so I'm going to start off with one of the basics that almost everyone in the space probably now familiar with is CryptoPunks. It was one of the first NFT projects before the standard existed. Um, but one thing they also did was um, they created the first generative art project in Ethereum. And how it worked back then, um, when it was launched before all the newer, fancier generative art projects came online, was um, they created these 10,000 CryptoPunks. And um, all of them combined have different traits and features that create 10,000 unique CryptoPunks. Um, so all of them now combined, they they took this uh, basically a, um, an image of 10,000 punks, took a hash of the image, stored it in a smart contract, and that way you can reference and verify that uh, whatever punk you have in terms of an ID in a smart contract references your specific CryptoPunk um, off-chain. Um, so yeah, it was it was a, it was a, it was one of the first projects, and that also helped inspire things like CryptoKitties. Um, and now it's you know as we've recently seen, the value has gone up quite a lot. Um, what followed after that took a bit of a while, but uh, I was debating whether to include this in this in this presentation merely because um, uh, when I think of generative art, I I when I look at it, it's, it's it it feels to me it should be the primary purpose. But that being said, um, CryptoKitties did have some some new things that contributed towards the space that other projects now use and also um, add to their experiences. And what it also did is like it took some of the ideas of CryptoPunks where you had this um, unique um, kitty that had various traits um, and the way the, the kitty um, you know how it looked was again you had this unique string of numbers and each sections of the string would relate to specific traits but what it also then introduced was this ability to to have kitties um, breed with each other and create new traits so that also definitely spawned a lot of interest in people trying to find rare traits in these generative art pictures um, but crypto kitties was also pro also a predominantly more like a kind of game, this game of creating this this thing. Um, similar to that is the Axis project, which also um, has a, a predominant alternative feature set, which is related to a game that's being played with these creatures. Um, after CryptoKitties, now I don't think there's a lot of people that know of this project. Um, after CryptoKitties came out, again, people were inspired by this idea of being able to merge two pictures together to create a, a new picture. And CryptoKitties had and CryptoPunks had discrete set of features, you know, like um, a cigarette in the mouth or uh, a purple hat. But Crypto went and used um, GANs, which is generative ad adversarial networks, to combine two images together to create a completely new image. And in this case, it's these um, anime girls. Um, which then combines them to create new new versions of it. Unfortunately, I don't think the project ever launched. They or it might have launched and this they, they they switched it off. But I tried finding the contract addresses, but I but I couldn't find it. But 
they they had I still have the white paper available, which you can go read on how it works. But it's essentially created a more fluid manner in which traits can be combined and created, and that is what you more readily see in generative art is the sort of more flexible process where it's not a small set of discrete features. Um, after Crypto, um, again by the same team that created um, CryptoPunks, the Larva Labs team, they created Autoglyphs. And this was the first, um, first, I would say, in definitely the first generative art project on Ethereum that attempted to um, entirely include the picture on chain in Ethereum. Now, in the case of Autoglyphs, what is created is there's a bit of smart contract code that generates a sequence of um, literally like slashes and circles and stuff like that and stores that on chain. And then as with um, the, the famous artist Sol LeWitt, there's a set of instructions on how to recreate the artwork once you have this set of um, symbols, right? Um, and and so once you have the set of symbols and you have the set of instructions, you can recreate your piece. This is also uh, very popular. It also spawned a bunch of uh, fast followers like Color Glyphs and, and other kind of projects. One of them was Generative, which which followed a similar pattern, but here it's, it, 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 it Drew what's called K compositions. Um, then um, what there were other ones as well, um, chain faces, which um, they created instead of this sort of symbols that's directly stored in on chain, it literally just stored the, the specific uh, Unicode or ASCII art directly on it. So if you would go into the smart contract now in Etherscan and you go for a specific token ID, you will see one of these faces and uh, this was also automatically generated. Now, after that period, which is all the autoglyphs kind of clones and all the sort of crypto kitties, crypto, crypto punk clones, um, one of my favorite projects launched, and this was Clovers. And Clovers contributed um, new kinds of uh, um, mechanisms to the generative art projects, which I feel is still relatively unexplored today. So Clovers adds one interesting, to, to a few interesting things. One of them is um, it's, it, it, it incentivizes people to keep generating generative art. So um, as most of the cases before, the creators of the generative set chose, say, uh, 10,000 punks, 512 uh, autoglyphs. Um, so there, there, was, there was somewhat of an attempt to limit the set of available options. But in Clovers, there's practically an infinite set because what you see on screen, right, is um, um, different games being played, the final stage of a game of Othello, which is the, the game where you play uh, with the, 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 the black white stones that flip each other. Um, and so in this case, what's interesting is the final outcomes are symmetrical ones, which people seem to appreciate. Um, versus non-symmetrical ones. Then the second thing that Clovers did, which is really cool, is they, cr they, they, they created this economy that incentivized people to keep creating these new pieces. Um, it had this bonding curve in the background where you could buy these coins and the coins were needed in order to essentially um, mint these new end states. So it was just a really interesting combination, trying to find art and patterns in a board game and also incentivizing people to do that, which I think is is not explored well enough. And, I, and when I get to the end, you'll see what I mean um, by 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 what we can still do with this model of trying to incentivize people to create generative art. Then um, a project came out called Avastars. Um, it, it 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 also followed the the general um, pattern of trying to create different traits and and combine them together. Same with like CryptoPunks. Um, and and crypto kitties, but what Avastars did, which was which brought a new um, facet to generative art in Ethereum, is that it's it's the first project that that explicitly created um, these pictures and images with SVG, SVG which is the image drawing standard, um, and by having that SVG directly stored on Ethereum. Um, in this case, 
um, it's not storing the entire image in SVG on Ethereum, but it's but it's stored all the separate traits. So in this case, you know, the guy with the beard, that SVG would be on um, on chain. And when the, the you have a specific avatar, it would render it by combining these different component SVGs and then creating the art piece, uh, which is which is really cool. Um, there was like the fun of one of the first projects to do that. And and the interesting thing to remember. Um, after CryptoKitties came out, when the, the ERC-721 standard was created, there, there wasn't really a, an attempt to create or include in the standard the ability to reference on-chain um, representations of the art. Um, so um, the, the metadata was uh, assumed to be a URI, which is off-chain, a, uh, say, a website, and including the image, right? But as you can see, like, um, as um, the the uh, project leader from uh, Avastars said, and Dan from OpenSea also said, is I think one of the goals with these art projects is that we need to try to create what's called a uh, looks like we uh, lost Simon. Let's see if his internet unfreezes here real quick. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Well, hopefully my internet doesn't reset, my router doesn't reset, but um, let's let's keep going. I could just show a bunch of cool pictures and then finish off. So Squiggly also does SVG. It's really interesting. Um, Artblocks is a platform that creates generative art projects. So there's much different ones like Ringers, uh, Nimbuds, um, Utopia, Cyber Cities, um, but they don't store SVG directly. It references the script. Um, Neolastics is a project I created that also uh, renders the SVG, but unique thing here is it borrows some of the stuff from Clovers, which uses a bonding curve in the background. Um, I'm going to ramble through all the, the rest of this. Um, F Block Art is also a new, new project that um, allows people to create different styles and then also um, uh, includes um, um, the, the blocks numbers or block hashes as reference for inputs. Um, other interesting projects are NF trees, which also uh, include some of the fees towards um, CO2 removal, carbon removal, which is cool. Tiny boxes also uses SVG. These are animated, but you can't see this now in this presentation, but it's really cool. Um, Crypto Cube Cubes is also an animated uh, generative art project. Um, and a recent one that also became popular was Hash Masks, which sold for quite a lot uh, of money. Um, although what's interesting about hash masks is that they follow quite a simple approach that hasn't been seen in other recent projects is they just reference the hash as is. Um, and then what we've also seen is um, artists like um, Pixel Q, uh, which is just artists that have created generative art in the past, creating just individual pieces and then, and then selling it on um, platforms like OpenSea. Um, Future projects, which I think could be interesting, is coming. Some uh, stuff like Euler Beats, which also includes generative art plus generative music, should be cool to see. Or um, different ways to experiment with creating editions, like Pulse is also a project that's coming, um, where you 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 you're trying to create a certain kind of scarcity, but automate it through new kinds of editions. So to end off with. Um, I think what we're still missing in a picture here is the inclusion of DAOs around generative art. So there was a Osaka DAO that, that commissioned people to create art for in Japan, for Japan, Japanese, the DevCon in Japan. Then there's also been projects like Trojan DAO that helps to create art. And then there's also Flamingo DAO, which people might be more, more familiar with now, that collects NFTs and commissions NFTs. Now, the holy grail at the end of this to finish off is the ability to combine these new kinds of economies with generative art such that you end up with an automated or what's called an autonomous artist and gene coogan which is the creator of machine learning for artists created this project called arium at.ai which uh, includes all these different aspects but also most interestingly includes um multi-party computation such that whatever is being generated by this generative artist um, would not be known by its contributors uh, human contributors or com um, program contributors to the project. So you essentially get this combination of the generative artist, uh, creative uh, um, uh, backing economy, AI, and philosophy of mind to 
ideally create a fully art autonomous and artificial artist that cre create art that we can enjoy, participate in, and share the value in that's being created. So I think there's still a lot of stuff that we can do with generative art. As you can see, there's so many cool projects that I've launched that are exploring different things. And I hope with each one, we try something new to create new kinds of economies around generative art, because it's really cool. So thank you for that. Um, I think my time's up and my internet's still on, so good for that. <laughs> Thank you, Simon. This is so cool. I think we have so much more to see on the side of generative art. I'm really excited to, to learn more about future DAOs that can come through. Um, I remember we were part of the early Flamingo DAO, so it's good to know that you think that's on the cutting edge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. yeah, I would love to, to jam some time to talk more about you know art and DAOs and, and what the future of creators is going to look like. Thank you so much.